This is Michael Castaneda of Plastic Audio, and we are on week two of my one episode challenge, my four part series, video series on podcasting basics. And week two is the best week because we are talking about audio gear. Here's photos, beautiful photos of gear that we're going to talk about today. We have some microphones, we have a handheld recorder, and we have a laptop running Pro Tools. This is a photo of a rig that I used last year for a competition. There is a, uh, there's a radio station in Santa Monica called KCRW, and they had a podcast competition called Radio Race. So me and my partner, Co uh, Courtney Kosak, shout out to Coco, we did an episode in 24 hours. We had to come up with the idea, we had to record it, edit it, um, and then post it in 24 hours. They gave us the prompt at 10 a.m., and... Uh, by 10 a.m. the next day, it had to be done. So we have a couple microphones. We have the handheld recorder again. We have a, a Zoom recorder, the F4, which I use, which is fantastic. And I also use the uh, the device in the middle because we did sound design on that too. So that's the OP1 from Teenage Engineering. So just like last week, the big takeaway that I wanted you to understand was uh, there are no rules to podcasting. If you haven't seen that episode, Go back and check out week one. Uh, so for this week, since we're talking about audio gear and for people that aren't techies or people that don't like gear, it can be very overwhelming. What I want you to understand and to think about and remember is don't make this difficult. Uh, the easier you make this, the better. You're going to have plenty of time in the future to make things as difficult as you want once you learn gear and it just it ruins your life because you spend all day thinking about it. Uh, so key question to keep in mind at all times going through this week is what does my show require? So we're going to talk about the uh, um, basics of recording and what is required to record. You need a sound source. So for us, for podcasters, it's going to be people. You need an input device. Um, which is going to be microphones. It's going to be an internal mic on a device or it's going to be an external microphone like this that you can plug into a device. So you have iOS microphones, USB microphones, or again like this one, an XLR microphone. You're going to have an interface. That's going to be something that you plug the microphone into. Uh, you don't always have to... So interface is used kind of loosely in this because I'm including uh, phones. But for a phone, if you're, if you're recording on a cell phone, uh, you know, that would be the, the mic and the interface. Uh, mixers are going to be the interface. Consoles are going to be in the interface, or, you know, recording consoles. You're going to need some type of storage medium. For a handheld recorder, for a portable recorder, like a Zoom or a Tascam, that's going to be an SD card. For something like this laptop, it's going to be a hard drive. And optional is going to be headphones. It's not, it's not, you don't have to have it, but it's such an important thing to be able to listen to what you're recording, why you're recording, that it, that, that, that it kind of should be a requirement, although I'm using that optional. So first up, the first uh, part of our signal chain is going to be the input device, which is going to be the microphone. So there's going to be basically two types that we're going to use. It's going to be an internal mic that's already built into a device, like a cell phone that has a microphone built in like a handheld device that, that has mics built in or a laptop that has a microphone built in, or it's going to be an external mic. It's, you know, uh, it's, external mics are, are going to be upgrades. They're going to allow you greater flexibility if you wanted to record. So it can be an iOS external mic, a USB, or an XLR mic like this 12 gauge right here. There's basically two mic types for uh, podcasting. Uh, um, that are most popular, and they're probably the only two that you're going to use. There are dynamic mics and there are condenser mics. I'm not going to go into what the difference is right now. If you have questions, you can ask me questions. I'll answer it on the podcast Q&A that I have on Anchor FM. But it's it's it's. I don't want to confuse you going, uh, or I don't want to confuse you yet going in or give you too much information. So there's two types, dynamic condenser. Now, if you do go with a condenser mic, I just want to make a quick note. They do require something called phantom power. You're going to see it uh, on the packaging or online as phantom power or plus 48V. So that is just required. It's just extra voltage 
that your interface or your mixer is going to have to send that mic in order for that mic to be uh, used. So if you do buy a mixer or an interface and you do want to use condensers, you have to make sure that that device or that interface um, produces phantom power plus 48V. Next up is we're going to have the interface. So we have the microphone is the, is, the, is the leading part, the first part in the signal chain. And then the interface is what you plug it into. And there's basically three types of interfaces. There's going to be a handheld. Um, there's going to be a handheld interface like the one that's uh, a pictured. It's the Tascam DR40. Uh, Zoom's another popular uh, brand that has a lot of handheld. There's going to be um, uh, another type of interface is going to be one that you would plug into a desktop computer or a laptop, and that's going to be um, all recorded on a hard drive. You can also buy a console, a recording console, or a mixer uh, as as your interface. And oftentimes those will record to a, a SD card or they'll record to your hard drive uh, via a USB cable. So you basically have three types of interfaces that we're going to be uh, using. The next thing is the storage medium. So SD cards for handheld devices, SD cards are extremely reliable. They're very safe to record on. I've I've kind of changed my 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 philosophy about recording. I used to do all of my recordings on a laptop, um, on on uh, using hard drives. But the 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 bummer about that is, computers and software are not perfect and they crash. And I've had that happen, and it's it's the worst feeling to be recording uh, for a client and have your computer crash. So I I pretty much do all of my recordings now. Um, two SD cards. So that's that's pretty much my storage medium of choice. Um, they're both digital, but SD cards for the most part are going to be more reliable. They're going to be more safer, uh, more safe. But, you know, hard drives are definitely an option and they can be very powerful. Again, going back to the headphones, uh, it, it's, it's being able to monitor what you hear while you're recording it's it's not a necessity, but it, it it might as well be. It's very it's it's very important. So you're gonna have to buy an input device, mics. You're gonna have to buy a uh, interface, which is gonna be a handheld recorder, a laptop, or if you have it already, that's great. And then the last thing you're gonna have to buy is headphones. And then you know we'll 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 go over that a little bit later. Basically, gonna talk about three price ranges that. Um, or, or, or gear for three price ranges that I would recommend. There's gonna be no budget, there's gonna be low budget, and there's gonna be high budget. So an example of a no budget rig that I would use for recording is a cell phone. Uh, I, uh, I've, I've talked about this in the last video and in my previous uh, uh, promotion videos for this uh, video series, but I use Anchor FM, which is an app that I have on my uh, Apple phone, on my iPhone, and it's great. It, it, it's an all-in-one uh, podcast studio. So all of the questions that you ask me, I'm going to answer on my phone. It's just on an app and everything is there. So if you have no budget at all and you have a smartphone, be it an Android or an Apple phone, you can get Anchor FM and that's all you need. And it sounds really great. I, I, was, I, was, I was pretty surprised at how great it sounds. Uh, if, if you have a laptop or a computer and you want to go no budget, I, I recently became aware of a software called Zencaster, and you can record right from your laptop. You can record phone calls, and it sounds great. It, it, it even does some of the post-production for you, so I definitely recommend that. Uh, if, if you have low budget, I would recommend getting a iOS microphone for your phone to upgrade that microphone instead of using the internal or you can get a USB microphone that would plug right into your laptop. You can even get headsets that have microphones that sound really good. So why would you get a microphone? Why would you spend money on an external mic instead of using an internal mic? Because for the most part, external mics are going to sound much better and they're going to allow you greater flexibility in your recordings. Handheld recorders like Tascams, like Zooms, they have uh, internal mics and they're great, but they also have inputs. So if you don't want to use the internal mic, they'll actually have XLR inputs that you can plug microphones in. I have a Tascam DR40. I think I, I, I had a photo of it 
um, in an earlier slide, and it's it's a really great device. I'm actually using it right now, so I'd show you. Um, Zoom is another popular manufacturer, and I think the H6 has up to six inputs, so it's really great. XLR mics, a dynamic condenser, absolutely recommend getting those. Uh, really quick on the XLR, the, the plug is going to be circular, and there's going to be three pins. Uh, so that's how you know it's an XLR. High budget microphone, or uh, high budget uh, rig is going to be like your traditional recording console. So something you would see in a recording studio. But they, they, they make them so small and so affordable nowadays that it, it, it makes sense if you're recording multiple people or if you're doing location recordings. Uh, a lot of them record to an SD card or they can connect to a laptop via USB so you can do either or both. Um, if you have money, if you have a budget, buying broadcast quality dynamic uh, and condenser mics, uh, you, you're, you're really not going to go wrong. Again, you really have to think about what your show requires. If, you're, if, if, if your show requires uh, really high-end gear, then buy high-end gear because it's, 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 it's going to sound great and it's going to treat you well. But it's not necessary. Uh, and then... A step up from using a, an internal mic for your laptop is going to be buying an audio interface, either a, um, a FireWire interface or a Thunderbolt or a USB for your computer. But it's going to give you better preamps. It's going to give you better sound. It's they're they're really great. So here are some photos of of the rigs that I use uh, uh, currently. So on the left hand side we have the high end budget so the, the 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 budget that i was just talking about where we have a 16 input recording console going to a computer which for most podcasts is completely overkill but i use it nonetheless in the upper right we have a a a rig that i use for um when i do tape syncs or when i do smaller podcast recordings and it's and, and it's more of the rig that i use currently which is a zoom f8 i have eight inputs the preamps sound great. It's small. I can move it around. I, I, I use great headphones. Uh, I, I, I use great mics, so I'm very happy with that setup. It's super reliable. That is is probably what I would I would advise more. And then in the bottom right is a Tascam recorder that I'm using the internal mics to record a fountain in front of the Vatican, and and that audio sounded great. So no matter what you use, great audio is available. Once we start recording, you're going to come up against um, or you're, you're going to be introduced to concepts uh, that you may not be aware of or you may not fully understand what they are. Mono versus stereo versus multi-track. So what is the difference in all that? So without going too in-depth, but I want to make you aware of this. So with uh, a mono recording, all sound sources are recorded to a single input. So an example is if I have a microphone in the middle of a football stadium, every single sound coming from that stadium is going to be recorded to that one microphone recorded to one track. So a podcast example is um, a smartphone app that um, records phone calls. If I call someone and I record that phone call, both of our voices are going to be on one channel. They're going to be on one track. So the problems that you're going to arise if you record everything just on one track is you're going to have no control over individual sounds. So going back to the stadium example, if I wanted to uh, increase the sound of um, a certain player on the field, let's say the quarterback calling out a play, I can't, I, I don't have such control that I can just increase his voice. I'm going to increase everything else because I'm recording everything to one track to one channel. So that's what mono recording is. So stereo recordings is a little bit different. We have two separate tracks that we can record to. And that's going to be your more typical, your more conventional recordings that we're used to. Whenever we listen to uh, music or we stream music, you're going to have two channels being the left and the right. So an example of a stereo recording, if I have a handheld device like the Tascam or the Zoom, if I place that on the street corner and I heard a car or I, I, I recorded a car go by, when I listened that back to headphones or if I had speakers in front of me, I would actually be able to hear the car move from first the right 
uh, channel, the right speaker, to the left. So it gives you a spatial, um, it, 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 it gives you that spatial awareness. Podcast example is if I had a, a, a phone call recording and um, it recorded it onto two tracks. So my voice would be on one track and the other person's voice, the person that I'm calling, that I'm interviewing, would be on another track. So now that they're separated, I have the ability to go in and I can increase just my voice and it wouldn't affect their voice. They're going to be autonomous. So that's, so that's huge. Um, and that's obviously the proto that, that I put down. Most people record all of their podcasts just in stereo. They want just a stereo mix because that's easiest. A step up from that is multi-track recording. So what I mean by that is we have the Zoom H6 that has six inputs. We record six channels. Rather than recording all six of those channels just to a stereo track, so I have six individual microphones going to two tracks, if you, if you use all, uh, all of those channels independently, and then later on, which we're going to talk about in next week when we go to the editing, you're going to have the ability to mix all of those down to stereo. So rather than just printing all six tracks to two tracks from the get-go, if you do everything independently, later on in the next step, you'll be able to increase or decrease those tracks autonomously, individually, and it's going to, it's going to lead to a much cleaner uh, sounding recording and and that's the way I do it. It's not popular, but it's 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 definitely an option and I I would I would I would probably recommend that going um, you know, forward to people that want to start to do this. So the last thing I want to talk about um when it comes to gear and this is something that people don't talk about as much as they should because you're going to have to factor this in when it comes to your budget is the recording accessories. So you're not just buying a microphone, a interface. You're buying the microphone, you're buying the mic clip, you're buying the mic stand, you're buying the mic cable, you're buying a windscreen. There's a lot of things that go into it. So be aware, like I said last week, uh, when it comes to show concepts, you gotta do research. When it comes to audio gear, you're gonna have to do research and all of that's gonna have to be um, factored in when you're allocating money to buy gear so there's you know recording accessories uh there there is more stuff than just the than just the you know the sexy microphone or the sexy interface here we go research you got to do research on it so uh when it comes to buying gear when i'm thinking about buying gear the first question is is what is required for my show uh getting back to the podcast that i have for this video series I didn't have to buy anything because what was required I had on my smartphone, on my iPhone. So you really have to figure out what's required and you don't want to spend any more money than you have to. Uh, the second question is, or the second thing to think about when you're doing research is, what is your budget? Everyone has a budget and you want to make sure that you maximize the gear that you buy for that budget. How much time are you willing to devote to the show? That's another big one. People that aren't techies that don't have the um, patience to sit there and really learn gear. If you buy a lot of gear, you're going to have to learn that gear, and that might that that may add time to the uh, uh, time that it takes to produce the show in post production, all of that stuff. So, like I said before, keep everything easy. Don't don't make this any harder than it has to be. And when you do do research, there's so much uh, um, available online. There's unboxing vids. I have a couple unboxing vids for mics. This one in particular, great mic. Uh, had a great time doing that unboxing vid. A lot of people have learned from that. I've gotten great feedback. Use these videos. Manufacturer, uh, whoever makes the mic that you're thinking about buying, go to their website, watch their videos. Retailers, uh, Sweetwater is one that I recommend. They, they have exceptional customer service. I'm not an affiliate. I'm not making money from them, but I just, I believe in what they do and I, they, they've helped me out numerous times. Sweetwater has a ton of videos. 
magazine reviews, and obviously social media. Well, search Instagram for videos, search Twitter for videos. All of that is, is, is free and it's, it's very valuable. So the next step that we have to talk about when it comes to recording is DAWs, Digital Audio Workstation DAWs. So what is a DAW? A DAW is the software used by computers when you record or you mix audio. So after, um, so once we get the microphone, once we plug it into the interface, once we once we plug it into the to the um, to the computer, or whatever, we're gonna have to launch some kind of software in order to record it or mix it. If it's if it's being recorded to a hard drive, if it's on a portable device, we don't need to worry about DAWs yet. That'll be next week. But if you do record to a computer. Um, or a laptop, you're going to need to have a DAW. So it's just the software that's used to record audio. First starting off, I recommend just using free software. Audacity is, is, is the most well known. And if you use an Apple, GarageBand is going to come with it. And that's totally free. And I recommend that if you want to pay money, if you want um, more flexibility, if you want more features, something like Reaper, Audition, Pro Tools is what I use. Uh, Ableton Live, Logic, Hindenburg. Different DAW, uh, different DAWs are going to be for different types of professionals. Ableton Live is going to be for someone that is really into music production, just like Logic is going to be for music production. Pro Tools is going to be more for just straight recording audio. Something like Hindenburg is going to be for journalists, uh, and it's becoming very popular for podcasters. A lot more on DAWs next week when we go to editing. I just wanted to make you aware of that right now so you can start to research. Um, yeah, like I said, I recommend uh, downloading Audacity and using that. There's a lot of current professionals in the podcast industry that run their entire business using free software, using Audacity. So it's, it's, it's very popular and it's, it, it's, it's going to give you more than you need for right now. A note on DAWs, if, if you do buy one, is make sure that they're compatible with the computer that you have. It's software, audio software is the same as any software. It has to be compatible. The last thing I want you to do is buy a certain DAW and then when you go to install it, you find out that it's not compatible with that OS that you're using or with that make or whatever. So now that we have all of the gear, that we understand what it does, the signal chain, now it's time to record. Before we record episode zero of your podcast, though, I absolutely recommend doing test recordings. And this doesn't require you buying gear to do a test recording. You can use your cell phone, the internal mic in your cell phone, or you can use the internal mic in your computer. But doing this, doing these tests, you're going to learn a lot about recording. And I want you to make the mistakes now and not make them during the uh, actual episode recording. So if you're using a handheld device, um, make sure that the device is on and that you adjust that you adjust the gain and that you make sure that you're getting signal in your meters. Hit record. A timer is going to come up starting from zero, going to however long you record for. Experiment with moving that microphone if it's in your cell phone or if it's in your laptop. Experiment moving that microphone close to your mouth, away from your mouth. And when you go back and listen, hear what that does. Same thing with the uh, um, laptop or with your uh, desk computer. Move away from it, get really close to it, get far away from it, speak at really loud volumes, whisper. I really want you to hear how, how all that affects the recordings. If you're recording to a, DA, to a DAW, like we talked about before, the DAW, uh, you know, you're gonna open the program, you're gonna create a new track, uh, you're going to make sure that the uh, program is, is using your internal mic. You're going to hit record, and it's the you know, same thing. You're going to move away. You're going to move close. You're going to turn the TV on um, to, 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 to hear that. If you have a handheld device, you're going to maybe walk around to different rooms. Do whatever you can to try and get as many different environments, as many different sounds as possible. Go outside. Record outside. See how all that um, sounds. I would do this two to three times too. Set it up in different rooms, record outside like I said. Um, try, try recording uh, multiple people. Experiment, do as many things as you can and you're doing this so that you can make the mistakes now 
and not when you're doing the podcast recording. So now comes the time where we're gonna record episode zero. This is gonna be the first episode that comes up on your podcast. What is episode zero? Episode zero is gonna be a really short episode. I'd say one to three minutes. And it's gonna be a background about who you are and about what the show's about. Rather than just get into it, we wanna give people a way that if they search for your show, a way to find you and find out what that show's about. Episode zero, you've done the test, you've researched the gear, you know what you're gonna use, you're ready, record it, one to three minutes, it's gonna be awesome, congrats. You've recorded your first podcast episode, I'm stoked. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Next week, we are gonna talk about editing that podcast episode. We're gonna talk more about DAWs. We're gonna talk more about computers. Week after that, week four, we're gonna talk about distributing that podcast. And you're gonna have your first episode of your podcast done. If you have any questions, please tweet them to me, email them to me, uh, send me comments on my social media, and I will answer them on the podcast that I have that coincides with this challenge. It's going to be uh, on Anchor FM. It's called Podcast Q&A by Plastic Audio. If you have any questions, please get at me. I will answer them. Congrats on episode one, on recording that episode. I look forward to talking to you on week three about software and editing. Thank you.